welcome back to the channel. Today, um, again, in my shop, which is good. Um, I am still working on the project house, so that is coming along nicely. Uh, the upstairs is getting very close to finishing. But today, I'm hoping everyone stays safe. Today, I am making a crosscut sled for my table saw. Um, and it's pretty much based off Nick Ferry's build. Uh, I'm tweaking it a little bit, but nothing much. It's going to be the same concept. So, for this, uh, you can do several different ways. Um, like, for instance, I'm using plastic runners. Some people can get the adjustable runners. Some people can, um, like there's metal adjustable runners. Some people will make hardwood runners. I did it this way because number one, it's cheap. I don't have to worry about movement. And I got them to fit pretty perfect. Like they don't move at all. So I'm happy with that. So there's that. Uh, drill and countersunk for some screws. I'm putting number 10 screw, three quarter inch. So they're gonna stick out, they're gonna go about uh, 400 thou into the plywood. I'm gonna use three quarter plywood. It's not Baltic birch like everybody else has. I don't have $80 um, a sheet to spend on Baltic birch. So this is pine, I believe, laminated pine. It's stuff that I've had hanging in the shop, so I decided, well, I'll use it. So, for instance, it doesn't matter the size you want to make it. You can make a little mini sled, you can make a big sled. I decided to make one that was this. And it is roughly 20 and 3 eighths by 30 and a quarter. That's the size I'm doing. Um, I don't think I need anything bigger. If I do, I can always make another one. So yeah. And the first thing I would do on all this is I would round over all your edges. Everything that's gonna get you picking it up sort of deal, just go and round them off really quick. It's not a not a hard thing to do with your router or router round over. So the other thing that I do is I made the front and back. So the front and back is just two sheets of plywood and it all depends on what size you want. Me, I kinda put a little rabbit in there so that way I can glue it and screw it on both ends so I can screw it from the bottom and I can screw it from the side. And I did this for the front and back. So this is the back one, same thing. Plus, I put a, um, a dado, I put my dado stack in, well it's still in, and that way I can put some T-Track in here. Put some T-Track and then I can use it for either a stop or something else. So that's pretty much where I'm at. Um, as far as this, you can keep it like this, nice and square. You can see the pencil mark. I think you can see the pencil mark. Yeah. So I kind of sketched out something, just a little design, just something to trim some weight and make it look a little more appealing. I know it's just a cross cut sled, but whatever. Um, this one is actually gonna have, the sled is going to have the mine. Okay, so once you get this all glued up, this is the back, back end. So this one I'm doing a little rabbit. I already showed you that. Um, next I'm going to cut a dado slot for T-Track. So that way I can put, uh, if I wanted to, whatever in the future. Uh, so three quarter wide and 400 deep. So it's 400, a little more than three eighths. So we're gonna cut that and go from there. So like I guessed, this is a three eighths draw bit. And luckily it fits right into the countersink that I did. So that was a pretty good guess. So I'm going to drill these four out, countersink them, 
and then the runners will be ready for to accept the uh, plywood. Okay, so we're to the point. Runners are made. Now, I made marks on the back of my sled. This is the bottom part. So that way I know where to spray my activator. So these runners sit a little under the miter track. So what I did is I propped them up on pennies. Now for all our Canadian people, these are becoming a rarity. They don't make these anymore. Uh, so if you have them, that's great. Nickels fit also in the slot. So if you want to use nickels, dimes are a little, a little too thin for me. So I either use pennies or nickels. Take your pick, but something to prop it up. Make sure you put it where the chamfer, your countersink is down because after this is glued in. So we're gonna put the runners on just like this. I keep mine back from the edge just a little bit. You can put yours wherever you want. They sit proud of the table. So I'm gonna glue this and then I'm gonna spray this. And I'm gonna try and keep this as square to the table as possible. This is square. So I'm trying to keep everything somewhat square. So that way it looks a little more appeasing. And then after that, once we put some weight on this, we're gonna let it set up for about five, 10 minutes. Take it off with the runner saw on it. Drill, pre-drill these into the uh, sled base itself. So that way you don't split the crap out of the uh, plywood. And don't go too far in. You don't need more than half an inch. Screw it in and then that part of it's done. So let's get going. This stuff is awesome. A little bit of weight. Now, I've had weight on this. This has been sitting for half hour or so. So in that time, I know, don't touch your face. In that time, I decided to uh, chamfer it. Well, I made my little shape and I chamfered it. And I kind of sanded it and made it look somewhat decent. This piece turned out good. I'm happy with this piece. That's the front. The back, well, not so much. So I started getting into rounding out all the corners and making it nice and everything else. And then I came over here and I started gouging it. So as you can see, so there's a spot right here where the router just kind of dug in because where I had my bearing set was in this. So, and then I have another spot right here that I just gouged to let me snot out of it. It doesn't look good. So I'm just showing you, um, made a mistake. I'm probably gonna glue up another piece, uh, re-dado it, because I'm not happy with the dado slot. But it was a little bit too wide. So there's a few things I wasn't happy with it, so I'm gonna make a new one. So, yeah, this one's junk. This one's uh, now firewood. The front turned out good. I'm happy with it. So now it's going to be putting some screws in. I'm gonna lift this up. Hopefully the uh, runners come with it. Mental note, this is a little tip. If you are going to use these runners, Hold on. So the way I found these, and this is just, it comes in a sheet, a four by eight sheet of uh, this plastic, something like that. Uh, I went to Checker Industrial, which is basically a hydraulic hose place. And they cut me off a section that was this wide, eight feet long and I am able to get six runners out of it. So something like this, and I think it cost me 10 bucks. Cheap, stable, 
Uh, plastic, so it's not really going to rust or anything like that. It's not going to move with the weather. So, but for instance, I went to pull this off and the runners stayed in the miter slots. So a little tip is to scuff up the plastic before you glue it down. Yes. Because I had to re-glue re this. So now we're ready to drill. Because you don't want to drill it or you don't want to not drill it. Just in case it splits then all this is for nothing. Alright, so I did have one of these runners come off yet again. But before I uh, started messing around with it, I took my pencil and I marked the line of where they were. So in case they did pop off and that helped. But in the process, I had to drill a couple extra in here, but everything works. Runs good, no issues. It's gonna need some paste wax. So that part is done. So now I have to, number one, make another backside because my router decided to mess that up. It was a router's fault, that's it. Uh, the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to set up to put some miter slots in this base for the um, miter jig that's going on this sled. So that'll be in a little bit. I gotta make that first. I gotta sw swap out my dado stack. So I'll be back in a little bit. All right, so this is all set. So the next thing I wanna do is I wanna put this T-Track that uh, I picked up from Lee Valley, which is a store that we have in Canada, which is kick-ass store. I wanna put a T-Track in both this side, so that way I can incorporate a um, the actual miter part of the sled. So just it's just an extra added thing. So I, I pretty much went, I took a nominal thing and I'm gonna be cutting on inside of each runner to put the T-Track in. So it shouldn't interfere with anything. So let's get that going. <laughs> That way this fits in, nice and snug. So we're gonna get that and we're gonna install it. And then I can put the front on. Get the front, cut a, some of it a curve, and then uh, wait for the back to dry. So, yeah. Okay, got the tracks. Um, I drilled, I have what, five screws per track. These tracks you can get it from uh, Lee Valley, that's where these tracks come from. There are a boatload of other tracks you can use, but these are local, easy. So I'm using a number five screw, and what I'm doing is I'm taking a good pair of side cutters. You need something decent because you gotta try to cut through the tip of this. So what I tried to do, actually what I did, is I started them with the tip still on it and I just started them in each hole. So that way it wasn't trying to cut wood that, I don't know, it's like starting a tap sort of deal. So <clears throat> this is going in first. I pre all the holes and then I cut the tips off of them because these are a little bit too long uh, I need from the bottom of the track to the bottom of the sled is like 420,000 ish. So I decided to cut it so that way it wouldn't pop through the bottom of the sled and then scratch my cable and all that fun stuff. So one other thing I did with the track because some people they do different things. So I've seen where some people cut dado slots through the fence. So that way it'll accept the T-Track bolts. So it'll accept these suckers, the T-Track bolts. I did a little bit different 
because I wanted mine to be removable without being gaudily ugly. I don't like the slot through there, it kind of weakens it. I want to try to keep it as beefy as I can. Um, so what I did, I'll show you, I'll take you off there. What I did is instead is I cut a couple reliefs in the top of the track. So that way when the fence is in, all I got to do is just go like this and then in, in she goes. And I have plenty of room because this fence is two, two, three quarter inch plywood thick, but it's got a dado in it, <clears throat> or it's got a rabbit. Sorry. So it's gonna sit on the fence and beside the fence, which will make it a little interesting for adjusting for making it square. But we'll, I'll come to that when I get to it. So that is. How the track is going in. Explaining the track, so I'm gonna screw this all down. I'm gonna raise my blade. I'm gonna make a cut. Uh, probably about three quarters of the way through the sled. So that way, when I put the other piece on, um, I can sort of line it up really, really close. So when I do the five cut method, I won't have to adjust it huge amounts. So. Let's get started on that. So this is how I did it. You can do it differently, depending on how. Like, like you see, this is the rabbit. So that way I can screw it this way and from the bottom. So it makes for a stronger hold. So that's what I did. I clamped it, I put this screw in, and then I used a big framing square. This baby. And I kind of got it as close as I can to the kerf. So I got the level in there, or the square in there, and I kind of monkey around the fence. So as you can see right here, there's a shim in there. So that is how I'm going to adjust my fence. So this is somewhat square. So what I'm going to do with this plywood is I'm going to um, utilize the five cut method. And I can, so essentially, put you down here for a minute. <clears throat> essentially the five cut method is you Take a piece of plywood or whatever it is, uh, it's got to be a decent size. You mark your number one and you cut. So one, two, three, four, and then you recut the fifth or your number one side, which is your fifth side, and you cut off a good chunk and you measure it. And you see through a couple formulas to see uh, how square your fence is. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to see if I can find it and put it. So, this sled is now square. <clears throat> After a little bit of monkeying around and doing the five cut method several times, um, I finally got it square. So the first time I was like 30 thou out. And so I pretty much took the fence off and I adjusted the table itself. Put it back on, did the five cut method again, and then I was out seven thou. No, 10 thou. So then I stuck 10 thou shim, and that's why I didn't go for just sitting on top of the plywood. I opted for the rabbit because I can use the same holes. Because if I would have did this with just sitting on top, I would have like four different pilot holes. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, no, no. So this, all I had to do is just put a shim behind it. We're good to go. So this is done. It is now screwed in both ways. So it's screwed this way and it's screwed that way. So we're happy, with, I'm happy with that. Now the five cut method, 
one of two things you probably need. So if you're not familiar with converting fractions to decimals, this little scale chart is everything. And you, um, for everyone that's a machinist or a mold maker or a die maker, these are very invaluable because they have so much information on it. So for people that don't know, either Google it or pick up one of these. I think these are like five bucks. Invaluable. The other thing you're gonna need to check this is a vernier. Doesn't have to be a digital one. It can be a regular one but you're gonna need that to get some accurate measurements. And you can pick those up fairly cheap, um, Harbor Freight, wherever. They have them, very invaluable for doing this and making sure you're pretty, pretty close. I did my last cut and I was half a thou out. I'm fine with that. I, if I was like three or four thou, I would've been fine with that too. Because on a, for what I do, I don't need it that accurate. It's great to have it accurate, but I, it's not critical. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a block for the back for when the saw exit the, uh, the sled. I don't accidentally uh, get myself. And then I'm going to start uh, tackling the miter part of the sled. One more thing before I exit the um, squaring up part. Um, I can leave the entire um, formula to calculating how square, or there's an easier way. Uh, you go on kevinsworkbench.com and he has it right there. You just, add, you just put in what your offcut measurements are from the front to the back, how long it is, and how long your pivot, and then it cut you, calculates it for you. So that's handy as hell. So, um, made a lot of progress. <clears throat> the unfortunate thing is, I didn't film it. Sometimes I get into the groove and I just blow through it. So, I'm gonna explain what's going on. So, let's take you off this. Second. So, Fence is on, fence is square, seven cut, or five cut, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you see T-nuts in there right now. That is for the miter attachment, which is gluing over there. I have a little guard that I glued up, just letting that set up for a little bit. I have a little block here, and it's just to protect when the uh, blade comes through the sled so that I don't get hit. And inside of this, so it's not just a box that I made, inside of it has another two sheets of plywood in there just to prevent it, once I get through the sled, it'll act as a, like a, a tension. Now, as far as this, this was a little interesting to make. And one of the reasons is because of the size. So with this size, what I did was I had one straight side against the fence and I pretty much cut it all on a miter saw. So I started with the, the miter saw, I did a nice as big a cut as I could with the 12 inch slider and then I finished it off with a track saw and then I made these runners that kind of clean it up and strengthen it a little bit. So they're just screwed in, nothing fantastic to think about. Um, this is 90 degrees. And I can't remember what the angle of this one is. But everything is 45, it, it looks, it works good. It works good, it functions. I just have to clean up some stuff. Uh, the only problem I have is where this side, this miter, I'm gonna have to cut into the fence just a little bit because um, it doesn't come out far enough. Where the other side, no problem, it clears. So, that's my issue there. 
and all it is now is just like roundovers, a little bit of sanding. Uh, this whole sled's gonna get polyed just to give it a little protection. And that's pretty much it. So I will show you the finished product when I get to it. So as you can see, the sled is done. Um, I put a finish of poly on it, poly clear, just to uh, just protect it. I'm probably gonna wax the bottom one more time, just to make sure it's in there pretty good. It runs pretty good right now. So I'm happy with how it runs. It's just one more just to make sure. Um, there's no plans. Um, pretty much this all came from uh, Nick Ferry for the most part I've altered it a little bit like I didn't put like that fancy track he put up here I didn't put a track in this fence um to be honest the miter miter part of the sled I'm probably not gonna use very often it might be some very intricate little work most of it I use the um, miter saw my miter saw is bang on good. It can tilt 18 different ways. You get the picture. So I normally just do all my miter cuts on my miter saw. This, this is just something extra that I decided, like just in case I have something delicate or whatever. So that's it. The sled is done. Um, the guard on the back is kind of neat. I uh, put a little extra here. If I feel that this is not enough, I'll make a bigger one or make a bigger, I don't know, I'll see. But I'm most likely not gonna use this very often. So that's why it's kind of like, okay. But I can still, if I wanted to, I could put clamps in the T-tracks here, or I could put uh, a stop up here or put a clamp. There's a lot of different things. That's why I made it the way it did, because it's very versatile. So I'm hoping everyone likes this video. Uh, give me a thumbs up. Uh, there is more stuff for a table saw. Uh, these sheet metal wings are going to go. I'm going to put some cast iron wings on it. I am not happy with the cast or the, the wings that came with it. So that's going to be something in the future. Um, there is a review on the little table saw that is beside this one. So that little guy. It's got a whole bunch of little stuff on it. That's kind of neat. So I'm gonna do a little review after I give it, I put it through its paces a little bit and uh, tell you the if, ands, and what's on it. It was a pretty cheap saw, so I wanna see if it's actually a cheap saw or if it's still pretty good quality. I'm not a, I like rigid saws. My miter saw, now the cast, I had the contractor saw, I got rid of it, and I've got this little guy, a little more manageable for weight. So, yeah. So I'm hoping everyone stays safe. Um, like I said, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, leave me a comment if you want me to uh, do something else. I take requests. And I'm hoping that uh, this all ends soon so I can get back to work work. Yeah. So. Hoping everyone's safe and talk to you later. Have a good one.